The Nazis created Fanta, one of the sweetest and most sold soft drinks in the world, owned by Coca-Cola company, has a dark past. Coca-Cola doesn't want you to know about. Millions of people drink it every day, without a clue about its dark past, all that because of crazy marketing. In today's business case study, we will explore how Fanta was made, how it became successful during World War II when people struggled to survive, what happened after World War II with Fanta, and finally, reveal the secret, did the Nazis really create Fanta? To understand the story of Fanta better, first we need to look at a short story about the crazy marketing which made Coca-Cola the most famous drink in Germany. A country that is known for drinking alcohol, and a country where soft drinks were looked as drinks for children. 1923, in Germany, people would drink alcohol like crazy. A few miles apart in Atlanta, United States, a guy named Robert Woodrow is elected president of the Coca-Cola company. He had an idea to expand the brand globally, but it wasn't so easy. They had tons of problems. They didn't have much money, nobody knew about Coca-Cola, and there were no demand. Fuel to Fire was an incident in France where they accidentally made consumers sick with the unhygienic bottle practices. But they got an idea to sponsor the 1928 Amsterdam Olympics. And there started the rise of Coca-Cola in Europe. Coca-Cola's demand started to go up. The logo was everywhere. Coca-Cola's leadership put a guy named Ray Rinton Powers to be in the charge of their German branch. Ray was an excellent salesman. He told people that they would own a villa in Florida for buying Coca-Cola. This tactic actually worked. Ray Powers scaled the sales from 6,000 cases a year to 100,000 cases. But Powers had a big flaw. He didn't do bookkeeping and Coca-Cola Germany was a giant financial mess. In 1933, Coca-Cola put in charge Max Keith, a 30-year-old German who will change everything. Same year Max Keith rose to power, an Austrian painter rose to power too. That painter wanted to Germanize everything. Keith's problem was that Coca-Cola's marketing was American. What I mean is that Coca-Cola started to market itself as an American product and everything America stands for. What in Nazi politics is not good. One more reason the Nazis didn't like Coca-Cola is because a member of the board was Jewish. Max Keith had a lot of problems, but he did manage to find a winning solution for Coca-Cola. Some of Keith's friends were high-ranking government officials, so he called in a few favors. But why the government left Keith alone is in the 1936 Berlin Olympics. Coca-Cola sponsored the Berlin Olympics, and after that they sponsored a lot of sports in Germany and some of Hitler youth rallies. What's different this time is that Coca-Cola isn't marketed as an American product, but rather a product for hard-working German people that deserve some rest because of their hard work. This worked like crazy. 50 factories were built between 1933 and 1939, and from 100,000 cases per year, they sold 4.5 million cases per year. They would put posters until every German knew about Coca-Cola. It was insane, but soon everything would change. Austrian painter decided to invade Poland. For a lot of industries, the trading stopped, but not for Coca-Cola. You see, each country provided bottling and sugar. Coca-Cola provided only the secret formula, the 7 syrup. So Coca-Cola Germany did business like usual. And when Germany invaded a country, they would give Coca-Cola factories of that country to Max Keith. So he produced even more. But the attack on Pearl Harbor happened and the US joined the war. The US put an embargo on Germany, which means no trading. Now Max Keith couldn't produce Coca-Cola because there were no 7 syrup. Keith asked Coke leaders to tell him the formula so he could make the syrup. But he couldn't get some ingredients, and that failed. So what now? Is this the end of Coca-Cola Germany? Everybody was panicking, people would lose their jobs. Max Keith hired a chemist and told him to make a new drink similar to Coca-Cola. The biggest problem was there were no ingredients, so they took leftovers from other food industries, mostly scraps like apple fibers, weighed the liquid product of cheese curdling, and few more ingredients to create liquid beige drink that would resemble today's ginger ale. When coming up with the name, Keith told the salesman fantasize, which in German means to imagine. When the veteran salesman, Joe Knipp, heard fantasize, he removed some letters and the drink was named Fanta. Fortunately for Keith, Fanta was all Germany had. 
and its popularity exploded. It got so popular and sweet that people would use it as an additive in soups and stews. In 1943, he stole 3 million cases of Fanta. That's almost the same as Coca-Cola. Fanta kept the company running. What's interesting is that their production infrastructure was bombed and destroyed by the Allies. Yet, they still sold millions of cases. It is said when the war ended, Allies found Keith in a half-destroyed factory bottling Fanta. But what happened after is even more interesting. Keith gave all the profit from Fanta to Coca-Cola. While never being in the Nazi party, Max Keith worked with them. Usually, everybody who worked with them would get punished. But in Max Keith's case, something unbelievable happened. It was opposite. Max Keith was pronounced a hero. He was pronounced a hero by Coca-Cola leaders for keeping the company running. For his award, they put him in a position where he would oversee all Coca-Cola Europe production. Fant, of course, stopped production for being associated with the Nazi party. But 10 years later, in 1955, they would reintroduce the drink in Naples. Now being orange color and produced from citrus and named Fanta Orange. It is believed that the drink was rebranded because of the ongoing soda wars with Pepsi as an answer to them because Pepsi launched few new drinks. Today, Fanta is one of the most popular drinks on the planet. There are still controversies following Fanta. In 2015, Coca-Cola launched an ad campaign in Germany in which they celebrated 75 years of Fanta. That's cool and everything, but people went mad because Coca-Cola said good old times in the ad. They apologized and said that they meant childhood, not the Third Reich, but the damage was done. Keith today is loved by some and hated by others. Loved because he saved the company and people kept jobs. Hated because of the acquisitions that he used slave labor in the production facilities. Also, he put on celebration for the painter's 15th birthday. Coca-Cola apologized for everything. So to answer the question, was Fanta made by the Nazis? No. Also, fun fact for the end of the video. While doing this research, I found out some sources that said the painter loved to drink Coca-Cola. Just really funny to me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more videos like this and entrepreneurial success stories, check out our channel. Comment what you think about the video and press the subscribe button.